All right, so let's start with some breaking in that have just come in where, according to reports, there's been an explosion that's been reported at a gas station in Kherson. And this, of course, being caught on camera. The driver of the vehicle can be heard saying just moments before the explosion occurred. But the gas station is located near the Kindi Highway. All right, so this, this is the visual that's been caught on camera of an explosion that's taken place at a gas station in the city of Kherson. Um, the person who was recording this, of course, was inside the car and driving on his way when this explosion suddenly occurred. So this is the latest visual that has come in in, in in terms of what's in fact happening in Ukraine, where there was an explosion that took place at a gas station in the city of Kherson that's being captured on camera. Meanwhile, the West is, of course, trying to ramp up pressure on Russia over its military invasion into Ukraine. And Moscow, at the UNSC, has used its veto power to reject a United Nations Security Council resolution that was created to condemn the Russian invasion into Ukraine. Now, there was no surprise whatsoever that Russia vetoed this proposal at the UNSC that deplored in the strongest possible terms the Russian aggression against Ukraine. And out of the total 15 members, this is how the division stands, 11 of the Council's 15 members voted for the motion, which was co-written by the United States and Albania, China, India, the United Arab Emirates. Interestingly, these three nations, China, India and the United Arab Emirates, have chosen to abstain from the vote, while Russia, which also holds a veto in the rotating Security Council presidency at this point of time, has vetoed this resolution. The draft resolution is now to expected to be taken up by the 193 member United Nations General Assembly in the next few days. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what's been happening at the United Nations Security Council, we're joined in by our correspondent Susan Tehrani, who's joining us live from New York. Now, good evening to you, Susan. The vote has taken place at the UNSC, and as expected, Russia has vetoed it. But interestingly, India, China, and the United Arab Emirates have chosen to abstain from the vote. What more do we know? Right. Uh, you know, there were. Uh, this was a vote that actually uh, was doomed to fail, basically, as you mentioned, because of Russia's uh, veto wielding power uh, at the United Nations Security Council. Russia also holds the presidency for the month of February, although being president really um, doesn't really give you that grant you that much of a power but uh, you know this was this was something that was also expected India has for the most part uh, taken a neutral stance and called for a ceasefire and a diplomatic resolution to the conflict uh, I think uh, China uh, was very telling in abstaining considering the fact that sort of this access of authoritarianism that the West had been talking about between China and Russia uh, was forming and that was something that the United States was concerned about. Uh, 
and you know we saw that abstention by China and some analysts believe the reason for that is because uh, China just does not want to jeopardize its economic interests with the West notably the United States especially now that there is talk that Russia might be disconnected from the SWIFT banking system and if we recall when the issue of Crimea was put up at the United Nations Security Council, China also abstained in that regard as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of the UAE, you know, Arab countries in general, they've, they've been for the most part pretty quiet uh, on, on the issue. And uh, Brazil also, you know, had sort of a, a vote and it also uh, voted uh, in favor of condemning uh, Russia right. uh, for its invasion into Ukraine. But uh, yes, the outcome was anticipated, and now it's going to go to the General Assembly. Let's see what, what countries say over there, but you know, we'll probably get a condemnation, a majority condemnation, but in practicality, there is only so much the United Nations can do. Absolutely, indeed, and it, it's quite clear that this, this was a resolution that was bound to fail because of the veto that Russia yields. But the question, of course, is this proposal, I mean, does it have any kind of an impact on what is happening on the ground in Ukraine? Will Russia in any way temper the measures that it is taking, the military measures that it is taking in the siege that it has now laid on the Ukrainian capital? Absolutely, and I think those are sentiments echoed not only uh, by those who are concerned uh, for Ukraine. We saw those sentiments being echoed by the Ukrainian ambassador to the United Nations. We saw those sentiments being echoed by Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, basically taking a, a not-so-subtle jab at U.S. President uh, Joe Biden. Uh, uh, a few nights ago saying that while Ukraine uh, was being bombarded, the world's largest power, uh, you know, stood back and stood by and, and just watched. And I think uh, mostly they want to see practical action coming out of the West. And I think that would be more valuable for them than condemnation uh, at the United Nations Security Council. Images are coming out that member states stood for a photo op holding the Ukrainian flag and wearing masks supporting Ukraine uh, before going into uh, the chamber. And again, while that makes very pleasant optics, I think what's happening on the ground in Ukraine speaks a lot more uh, than, again, you know, putting this vote and these words right. that uh, the West is coming out with. I think more sanctions was expected on the part of Ukraine. I think Ukrainians feel alone and abandoned at this point, mm -hmm. and um, they wanted to see more from their quote-unquote Western allies. Absolutely. Absolutely indeed. And, and you've been tracking the story very closely for us in terms of how the United States, of course, has been responding. Um, a couple of days back, we heard from the White House where it said that it is not willing to impose energy-related sanctions yet on Russia. Is there a possibility that the United States could change its mind, considering how far Russia has now moved into Ukraine in its war? When it comes to the energy, it's interesting that uh, that energy sector is always being carved out so Russia can sell its energy. Remember, the United States also gets about half a uh, million barrels uh, from Russia as well. Uh, on the one side, you have Europe that's heavily reliant on uh, Russian energy. The only possible way that Russia's energy sector may be sanctioned if, for example, Joe Biden would come out and uh, reverse his executive order of not shutting down the Keystone pipeline, which he did in the beginning of his administration, and let natural gas flow here in the United States and make America once again a big gas importer, uh, an exporter to Europe where, you know, it can make up for that. But as of now, uh, it, for whatever reason, perhaps decarbonization, green energy, so on and so forth, uh, climate change, as, uh, as John Kerry put on his 
high list of uh, right. priorities during the Ukraine crisis. Uh, the United States has decided uh, to not put the energy sector, Russia's energy sector, on the sanction list because it was it would drive up gas prices not only here in the United States but because it fears retaliation on the part of Russia that it might cut off gas to Europe, kick out the United States out of some form of negotiation and start negotiating with Europe on its own and try to come up with a Russia-Europe security pact and then you know, the U.S. would have to have a second hand and a second word in that pack. So very right. unlikely. Absolutely. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Susan Tehrani, for joining us and getting us all those updates there from New York City. We'll, of course, come back to you as more details merge in this story. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.